So there are two two things, two separate things when it comes to miracles. One is do inexplicable, bizarre things happen? All right. The second question is if something bizarre, inexplicable, beyond reason or explanation happened, who did it? What is the agent? Who is the agent? What is the cause? Those are two separate questions. And you can have you can have an inexplicable event and not know who the agent was. So that's the first thing. Here's the second thing. The same is true even in a religious context. So if I recall rightly, you can correct me, but I think one of your attempts to define miracle was something like the inexplicable that takes place in a certain religious context. Well, um, th- let me give you um, that, an that's exa- uh, that's how to uh, distinguish a, a miracle from, let's say, an anomaly is is okay. how I use that. So, so let me let me uh, let me ask you this, which I suppose is also asking your hearers uh, this hypothetically. Let's just take for granted that the canonical um, testimony given in the canonization of Joseph of Cupertino uh, is correct. This is a guy who lived several centuries ago in Italy, and at his beatification uh, proceedings, over 100 people testified that they saw this guy levitate, go off the ground, not not a half inch, not an inch, but really get up there okay and this this uh this included uh this included a pope this included bishops this included uh some protestants who were skeptical included lots of people all right so let's just say this happened let's say that this funny little friar occasionally would pop off the ground by the way it always happened when he was in some sort of meditative state so who did this? Well, uh, Roman Catholic tradition says God did it. God made him fly. Okay, he flew. I believe he's the patron saint of uh, air, uh, of uh, pilots, airplane pilots. I think that's really true. Anyway, um, who did this? It, it's really hard for me to think that God just, you know, every now and then said, let's let's raise Joseph off the ground. This this will be fun. Uh, if this happened, I don't know what the cause is. I don't know what the explanation is. Maybe it's some um, hidden, latent, weird human ability. I, I, I simply don't know. But but but. If these, again, hypothetically, if these things took place, they took they took place when he was praying. They took place when he was in church. Uh, he was a very pious person. The, the, the context is nothing but religion, nothing but Roman Catholicism several centuries ago. So who did it? So for me, the question is always, did something happen? One, two who or what was the agent? And for me, actually, the question of agency is more difficult than the question of miracles, because I actually, you know, I, I, I think Craig Keener's book uh, has some stories in it. You know, the big two volume miracle thing Sure, it has some st- some of those stories. I think I can explain away as a critical historian, but some of them are, are really interesting. I have no reason to doubt all of them, uh, all of them that seem to break natural law for example. And I've seen things in my own experience and uh, in my immediate family that break um, natural law or what we call natural law. So for me, this is just an empirical question. One, agency, that's that's uh, that's a real problem. OK. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you there. Sometimes question. the uh, work of the historian, that's where it ends. It's it's did the event occur? And that's <laughs> That's where it ends. It's like with the resurrection of Jesus, I think the historian, as you do, the historian can conclude that Jesus rose from the dead. But that's where the work of the historian stops. We can't go, we don't have the tools to ascertain that God did it, or whether an alien in a parallel universe um, faked this and, and made Jesus rise uh, in, in, in order to deceive humans into thinking that Jesus is God's son and therefore he gets his PhD 
yeah. uh, in this parallel universe. I mean, because he was able to accomplish his goal. That's that's something. I mean, we can have our opinions as historians, but we don't have the tools to be able to affirm or or confirm one and not the other. My my thing is when I talk about the religio historical context is to say. It, it's more likely that what we have on our hand is a miracle rather than an anomaly. And that's saying that the event occurred, assuming, like you said, the event occurred. It's a miracle rather than an anomaly. Or we could even just say it's a supernatural event and not identify God as the cause. It could be an alien. It could be uh, uh, some kind of a, a demon or an angel doing it. But the, if we assume that the event occurred, the way we distinguish it as a miracle <clears throat> from an anomaly is to say, it occurred in a context charged with religious significance. And that's what I'd say uh, uh, about this saint that you mentioned. 